morning friends and happy Tuesday. So today I'm just gonna do a day in the life vlog. Um, I'm gonna jump right in. Um, it is 8.53. Um, Cash is already on his way to preschool. Scott's going to the gym and I have my very first meeting in my new school district. So today is virtual orientation for first year teachers um, new to the district. And it's supposed to be a two hour long meeting on Google Meet. So it starts in about six minutes, so I'm just getting everything pulled up. I've got my notebook, pen, pretty much everything I'm gonna need, water. I believe I'm probably gonna be muting myself for the majority of the meeting. They also sent us meeting notes and the PowerPoint presentation that they'll be giving us so you can kind of like follow along on your own. But I'm pretty excited. It just gives me like hope and like gets me excited for the next school year. So I pick up my new laptop on July 7th and then I believe we report to training on the 9th and that will be at our own locations. So somewhere between the 1st and the 7th, I'm hoping I can get into my classroom and begin setting up. That would be super nice if I could do that. My principal said she was really gonna try to get me in at the 1st of July. So I'm crossing my fingers because my um, my rent on my storage unit is due like July 3rd. So it would be super cool if I could move in like July 1st or 2nd. Then I could not pay rent <laughs> for that another month. But anyway, so that is what I'm doing this morning. I'm gonna put you guys down and I'm gonna get into my Google Meet. Under human resource, employee resource, you'll be able to see a link for iVision. The username is the first two letters of your last name and the last five digits of your social. The last five usually throws people off because we're... Okay, so that's over with. It only took an hour to get through that meeting. I took tons of notes. A lot of stuff was like basic knowledge, things that I pretty much already knew. But of course, new to the district orientation meetings are super important to attend. This one just happened to be online. They just covered basic stuff like your first day, where you need to go, uh, special dates, launch days, pickup days, where to send certain documents, things like that. So I did take a lot of notes. And so now that that's done and I have an extra hour, I think I'm going to look on Etsy because I'm trying to decide what I wanna do planner wise for next year. I have my little Go Girl planner, the one that I got a while back. It's really small. It's a write-in planner, but I think I might be doing digital planning this year. I'm going to start out the year doing digital planning, and then if for some crazy reason I hate it or something, then I will find a planner like from Joann's or something. I really don't want to spend a ton of money on a planner just because I know I can find something cheaper and for what I need it for. I always buy... Erin Condren planners and I always buy a crap ton of stickers and then I never have the time to sit down and actually use all the stickers and like make it cute. I always only have time to like quickly write things in and write things down. So I'm looking online for a digital planner. I love Jess's planners, Hustle Sanely. I love her planners, but I wanted to find one that had more stickers on it and I just use GoodNotes uh, for this. So um, I think I'm gonna start the year off doing digital planning because I have this iPad and I like digital planning. I just, it's hard when I have a, a planner and my digital planner and I like bounce back and forth. So I'm gonna start the year off digital planning and if I hate it, then I'll replace it. So that's what I'm kind of working on right now. I wanted to show you guys something really cute though. The lighting in my house is so bad right now because I find that when I do Zoom meetings, the lighting right here at my kitchen table is the best, but it is like really bad when you're walking around. 
I'm gonna make this into a cute little teacher stuff haul, so hold on a sec. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys a few things that I've purchased in the last couple of days, um, weeks, whatever. Uh, not a lot, but they're all teaching related. So uh, first thing I'm gonna show you guys, I got a couple new pairs of glasses. Um, you've probably seen these on my Instagram, but um, these are the Romy style. These are all I buy direct, by the way. Um, I really like these. They're very uh, close to like a Ray-Ban shape. And I did get them in like a turtle, tortoise shell kind of color. I really like them. They are large and um, they, they are a little bit loose on my face, but it's fine because I like having really big glasses. Um, and if they're too small on my face and they just drive me crazy. And then these are the Chilling. I've had these before. Um, they're just the plain matte black round frames. I've had these before, like I said, they broke a while ago, so I just did replace them. Um, but again, these are the Chilling and these are the Romy. So these are my two newest, um, glasses frames, glass frames, glasses frames. I don't know how you even say that. Um, next thing I got is not really teaching related, but I'm going to be using them at work. Um, I went ahead and took the plunge and I invested in Moxie lashes. So I really loved getting my lash extensions done, but $50 every two weeks is just not feasible for me. I like would rather have $100 extra a month for something else. Um, and so I did invest in these Moxie lashes. They are the magnetic liner lashes and they look like this. And guys, I'm not kidding you. When I put them on, they look like I'm wearing lash extensions but I can just put them on and take them off every day, uh, which is great because sometimes lash extensions can get a little bit annoying. You can't rub your eyes. You can't go swimming. You, I don't know. They just, I just feel like I'm not gonna use them again for now, for a while. Um, but the Moxie lashes are great. They are supposed to be um, up to 30 wears per pair, but I feel like I could probably stretch them way longer than that. They're around $50 for a pair, but I feel like they're worth it because the quality of the lashes are just, it, they're just beautiful. Um, I do have the other pair that I got from Amazon, which are just as good, but I feel like these are somewhere in between like super light my lashes and like bam in your face lashes. So I did invest in these Moxie lashes and I'm planning to wear those to work. Okay. These next couple items are completely teaching related and I bought them for teaching. So you guys know I love Lipstick and Littles t-shirts. And so I did get a couple new shirts and a hat. Um, so I did get the Made to Teach hat and I know that I can't wear this like in the classroom, but I can totally wear it like to the gym. I could wear it on recess duty. Um, I might not be able to wear it on field trips this year, because, you know, we probably won't be taking many of those. But I thought it would be super cute to just add to my wardrobe um, and just have, you know, for when we go back to the classroom to start working in there or to wear on weekends. Um, I just love it. So I got the hat. And then I got in a small, this teacher life is the best life. And I love this color. It's kind of like a, a heather pinky peach. It has like heathered gray bits in it like I don't know if you guys can see that color I need to wash it first because it is a little stiff um, but again this is just a lipstick and littles t-shirt and it says teacher life is the best life I love that one and then my new mascot for my new school is the cheetahs so I'm a little bit sad that this didn't come in cheetah print but I understand why it didn't and that is the hey all you cool cats and kiddos um, it is tiger stripes, which, you know, they're two different animals, but I still thought it would be really cute to have at my school because we are the cheetahs. So I got one of these for myself in a small, and then I also got my, one of my new teammates one as well because, um, I knew she would love it. Um, I don't know about the other one. He's a guy, so I'll ask him when we meet up, but, um, if he wants one, I'll get him one, but I did, I just didn't know. 
Um, and then my other favorite Etsy shop, well, she's not an Etsy shop, but this is an Etsy shop, um, Teaching Joys, my dear friend Shannon, makes the most beautiful headbands, earrings, and stickers, and she is beginning to make masks. So I grabbed this one, it's so cute. So the fabric is like a little bookshelf, and it comes with like a globe, little succulents, um, books, and these are great. They're very comfortable. The elastic is very big, so it is going to fit pretty much anyone. Um, not too tight, and it does expand down below the chin, and it's pretty tight along the sides and I also put it through the fire test so what they're saying is if you have the right filter you won't be able to blow up blow out a flame through the mask and these are flame proof so I got this one it's this adorable bookshelf pattern and then I also got this beautiful farm she called it farm stand I believe um, but it's just these beautiful flowers black print or sorry, black background with yellow and red flowers. And I thought, because I wear a lot of black, this would match perfectly with pretty much anything black that I wear. I also grabbed plain black and white checks because this will pretty much match anything I wear as well. Again, these are all the stretch, um, like it's the folded material, so they do open up um, to go under your chin. And then Stinker Shannon stuck another one in there, um, and it is the Flying Books pattern. So I love this one. I haven't tried this one on yet. And like I said, they are made very well to where they can like fit anyone. The elastic doesn't really pull my ears. You guys can see that. Um, super comfortable. Depending on my district's regulations and rules, I might have to wear a mask, but I don't feel like they're going to make me wear it all day. However, I am going to be teaching science and I'm going to be doing a lot of hands-on with my kids. And if they can't work in partners, then it's going to be a lot of me working with them and helping them out. So I got some masks so that I can have one per day um, if I need to work with small groups or one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. I do have two other masks that my mother made. I actually have six masks, so that's perfect. Um, so yeah, those are super cute. I will put links to Teaching Joy's Essay Shop down in the description box if you guys are interested. These masks are only $12, and I do have a discount code for 10% off. It's just Apple's 10, and I think it will take at least a buck or two off of your order. So. If you're interested in getting any of these masks, she does have a ton of other patterns and they're really super cute. So that's that. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do at this point in the day is do a little bit of planning. So um, as of now, I am still just teaching science and social studies. I really don't know if they're going to um, push away the departmentalized for me um, at my school, but I do know that we are K through eight, so if they do undepartmentalize the fourth grade, they would have to do it all the way through eighth grade. So I don't know if they're going to do that. Um, I also know that if they undepartmentalize fourth grade, they're going to have to train me in the reading curriculum. They're going to have to train my partner, my sorry, my other two uh, co-teachers or <laughs> team teachers, they'll have to train um, her in one of the curriculums because we do have two curriculums they have eureka math and then wit and wisdom is the ela curriculum so i have already been trained eureka math and i've taught fourth grade eureka math so i would not need to be trained in that i'm sure the district would probably require me to go to some sort of meetings um, for that and then they would have to train me in wit and wisdom and they would have to train Maria, the ELA teacher, in Eureka Math. So they would have to train two of us in two different curriculums if they are going to undepartmentalize us. So I don't feel like they're going to, but in the event that I do end up teaching full fourth grade, it's gonna be fine because I've taught full fourth grade before. 
I just would really love to know sooner rather than later if I'm going to be teaching ELA and math because I would love to get plans ready. So as of now, I'm still just planning for science and social studies. Um, and so I'm using the Arizona State Social Studies and Science Standards, which are separate from the Common Core Math and ELA standards. It's very strange. Arizona has their own set of things. They like to make things crazy. You know, Arizona leading the way in education. Um, so the Science and Social Studies standards are completely separate documents from the Common Core Math and ELA. I'm also going to try to integrate next generation science standards in as well. So what I've been working on the last couple of times that I've planned, um, I've been trying to find like alignment between the two. And so I've kind of started working just, I'm going like topic by topic. And so I've already found one similarity. And you guys, if you have any suggestions on next generation science standards and trying to like, because our kids in fourth grade in science are tested. Um, it's the Ames science test. There is not an AZ merit test for science yet. Um, they're not tested in social studies, but they had been integrating ELA and social studies together. However, now I get to do social studies by itself. Um, obviously with next generation, you integrate ELA into that as well. So of course I'll do that. Um, but I do have to make sure that I cover the Arizona State Standards for Science because they are tested on them um, in addition to their AZ merit tests. If we even take those this year, I don't know if we will. It all depends on what happens in the school year. But anyway, so I did make a correlation between a couple of them. So if you're a science teacher, this is gonna be great for you. <laughs> um, so I found four ESS2-1. Um, make observations and or measurements to provide evidence of the effects of weathering or the rate of erosion and then analyze and interpret data from maps to describe patterns of Earth's features. So those are going to be like topographic maps um, of land, the ocean floor, as well as maps and locations of mountains, continental boundaries, volcanoes, and earthquakes. So um, there's also little disciplinary core ideas in here talking about like rainfall shaping land. So basically the topic of erosion um, and the earth's systems. So that one matches with the Arizona science standard. Um, it is EIUI.6 and seven, which is to explore and explain the interactions between Earth's major systems and the impact on Earth's surface materials and processes. So to me, that's gonna be like, um, you know, how weathering and rain uh, cause erosion and shape the Earth. And then using various rock types, fossil location, and landforms to show evidence of Earth's surface changing over time. So those two are completely correlating, they go together. So I'm going to attempt to use some of the cross-curricular, cross-cutting, whatever. I don't even speak standard right now. It's like been way too long. Um, the cross cutting concepts and try to like smash the two different standards together and utilize the ELA pieces as much as possible. So for now, I'm just trying to find matching standards and then create some sort of curriculum map or pacing guide for myself so that I can start physically planning. I do have my first three weeks of lesson plans done. I am going to begin the school year with a week of icebreakers, procedures, safety, things like that. The second week will be straight into the engineering process because our school is a STEM school and I know that we're gonna do a lot of um, project-based learning. I know that every year they do one PBL for a quarter. Um, and so I want to get those engineering standards taught and drilled and I'm gonna be touching on them like a lot. So I'm beginning with that and I'm gonna use STEM activities to kind of get the ball rolling. And then I'm going to begin social studies with the geography of the U.S. Because in fourth grade, in Arizona anyway, 
social studies is now the Americas pre-colonization. So it's all about um, Mesoamerica. Um, anything prior to European settlements is basically what we get to study. So I really want to create some sort of like timeline visuals so that I, the kids can see like where in time we're studying and like from start to finish where we've been. Um, but I'm going to begin with basic geography of the Americas because I know that once the kids have a good grasp on where things are, they'll be able to understand where things are taking place. Um, when we start studying ancient cultures and Mesoamerica and stuff like that, they'll be able to make a connection between where it is and what's happening there. So um, I know that we're beginning with that. And then I'm going to jump right into erosion and earth systems and um, the changing of earth's surface earth's surface. I found a couple of things on Teachers Pay Teachers, just pacing guides that people have already made. And I'm kind of going off of that, but I also have to, like I'm using the next gen science standards as my guide, and then I'm smashing in the Arizona science standards in there. So I found a few pacing guides for uh, next generation. I'm kind of using that. So I'm just going to continue looking through these standards and try to make like a document that aligns the two together so that when I'm planning, I can say, okay, well, I'm going to use these standards from this list and these standards from that list. It's a lot of work um, because I don't have my own curriculum for science or social studies. Um, so I'm kind of creating my own, uh, which is really fun and gives me a lot of freedom, but it's also a lot of work. So I'm going to get started on that. And this vlog is already forever long. So if I have anything else fun to show with you, fun to share with you guys, I will, um, and yeah. Hi! <laughs> hey you guys, so it is much later in the evening. I am now obviously here in bed with the dogs and I'm filming on my computer camera. But I wanted to just end the vlog here. Um, the rest of the day, I just hung out, played Sims, um, I got Thai chili to go for dinner. We got some crumbled cookies. Cash and I played um, firefighting. It was a blast. So um, I just wanted to end the vlog here and just thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, I would like to put out some more planning videos, planning vlogs uh, throughout the process of planning my curriculum map and pacing guide. Um, and just put out a lot more teaching related content as well as some really fun summer stuff. We are going to Prescott, I think tomorrow, either tomorrow night or Thursday morning. And I really want to put out a Prescott vlog because those are my favorite. They're just so nice to have to like look back on and have memories. Um, but anyway, I'm talking too much. So I'm going to go. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and if you're not following me on Instagram and you would like to, then that will be linked down below. Um, and thank you guys for being here, and I'll talk to you guys later. We'll